Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. My name is Pinky. Teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my lovelies. Did you guys miss me? <laughs> I missed you guys. It's been extremely crazy. Um, not sure how Pluto in Aquarius is treating you guys, but it is making major transitions and transformations in my life. So it is uh, very exciting. Uh, as well as extremely challenging to say the least. I want to give you guys a quick update and let you guys know that our book finally manifest your destiny is out. You can find all of the links to all of the journals and the book itself on the description box below. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, uh, what are the journals and what is the manifest your destiny book? The manifest your destiny book is specifically for you guys to grasp and understand how the law of manifestation works, the law of attraction. Um, I give you guys examples, I give you guys exercises, and I also speak about experiences from myself as well as from clients when I'm working or coaching them through manifestation. So you will be able to find all of that in the book, Manifest Your Destiny. Now the Gratitude Journal, the 369 Manifestation Book, those are journals that are helping you to specifically put the energy and focus on the manifestations that you're trying to draw in. We do have another journal that is going to be coming out sometime in July, and that is specifically for those that are interested in working your shadow side, healing your childhood traumas, uh, letting go of a lot of limiting beliefs, etc. I will announce it when it's ready to go for you guys. So like I said, you guys can find all of my books and journals on Amazon. The description will be in the box below. For those of you guys interested in consultations, in readings, or any type of spell work, you'll be able to find that as well in the description box below on our online store. All right, my lovelies, I want you guys to be ready because I am going to be extremely proactive on my YouTube channel. Um, I have tons of videos coming out and I will be doing a lot of readings for you guys. I've been hearing a lot of your messages and a lot of you guys have been wanting uh, even weekend reading. So that's something that I'm going to be incorporating. We're going back to the Tarot 101 for those of you guys that follow those lessons. Uh, it's just a lot. Is It's been very hectic and it's been a lot lately. So without further ado, let's get into your readings. By the way, I'm curious to know how is this Pluto in Aquarius treating you guys? Have you guys experienced any changes, any transformations, anything that you're being forced to revisit from the past 10, 15 years maybe? For myself, I had an incident, um, I had a client that really needed me, um, and they stay out there in Mexico, so I was basically offered uh, to go out there and to help them out, and at the same time, uh, we were having some issues with uh, my mother's house that we have over there in Mexico that they've been building for quite a while. Uh, so I felt like it was just perfect timing. Um, I decided to go. I hadn't been there for 23 years, you guys. Um, at a very young age, I, you know, promised myself not to return. Uh, there's a lot of history uh, back there. Um, and I did. And I feel like uh, it has a lot to do with the transformation and also the letting go of certain cycles in our life that maybe we're not aware that we haven't fully healed from. Uh, so I urge you guys and I highly encourage you guys that right now is the time where it seems like the universe is going to be forcing you to make certain decisions and to take certain chances. And the advice to that is to jump on it and take those opportunities. It is not only healing, but it's going to be very transformative for all of you. So um, definitely take advantage of that. <clears throat> and when you're being challenged, rise to the occasion, my lovelies. You guys are powerful. You guys uh, have much more power and are in much more control than you think. Um, so anyways, let's get into the love readings for all the zodiac signs. We're going to begin here, uh, of course, with uh, Taurus. We are at the ending of Taurus, going into Gemini. Uh, so we're going to continue uh, beginning here with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on in your love life. For those of you guys new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. For those of you guys returning, welcome, my lovelies. Get your coffee, your tea, your wine, whatever it is, <laughs> and let's get into it. All right, spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to open up as a vessel of communication. Let it be you who speaks through me. Allow me to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages. What are the messages that we have here for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for their new love? 
give me three cards to represent their new love and give me three cards to represent their old flame or or old partner here we go taurus sun moon rising venus three cards for new love three cards for old flame all right let's begin all right taurus your first card here is the four of wands i don't do reversals <laughs> it is the deck that's reversed okay four of wands uh this is your new love how they see you the how they feel about you interesting i don't do reversals and they're coming out reversed and the nine of cups okay i feel like i have to double check you guys because someone has touched my deck <clears throat> Sorry if this is taking up. I'm probably going to skip this part because I'm just wanting to check all of my cards. I don't do reversals, you guys, and I know I've been asked that a couple of times and I've clarified that for you guys. The reason I don't do reversals is because I channel the messages. So there is no need for me to read them in reverse or read them, you know, uh, straight up. Um, it doesn't really matter what they're trying to communicate comes through. But it does trigger me um, when I see them reversed because I don't do reversals. So that means that this deck has been touched. And I am not surprised at all. And not in a bad way. Um, I have nieces and nephews. And uh, they are very, very curious since a very young age. Now they are teens. Um, so sometimes they'll try to be smart about it <laughs> and come in here and ask questions to my desk, to my decks. <clears throat> so... very interesting because they are all reversed all right so we're just gonna go into it um i will continue fixing these cards but all right so we're starting off with your new love tour is here with the four of wands the high priestess and the nine of cups what does this mean? This means that uh, either you have already connected with someone or you will be connecting with someone uh, that you feel on a soul level, the connection. It's going to feel very organic. It's going to feel like coming home. Um, and, and I'm being told specifically for those of you guys that are single, I feel like this person that's coming into your life will be coming in sometime by the end of this month or the beginning of June. Um could be water energy or uh, fire energy, uh, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, or Scorpio, um, Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer. Now, for some of you guys, this connection is going to come to you as a surprise, almost like not really looking for it. It just happens. For some of you, this person is either in your neighborhood or it could be someone that is new moving into your neighborhood. Uh, this is a person that is solidifying some type of home structure. And I feel newness to it. So it, it, like I said, it could be a person that is uh, visiting from another homeland. Or that is, or that is uh, moving in to your vicinity. Now, what they're showing me here is, again, the Nine of Cups is always emotional fulfillment. Uh, with the high priestess, it's the knowing of the emotional fulfillment or emotional connection that you guys have. So it's kind of like, not sure if you guys have ever experienced bumping into someone or talking to someone that you've never met in your life. And the energy and the conversation just flows so organically that it feels like you've known each other for a very long time. Now, this has happened to me multiple times in my life. Um, specifically with uh, soul friends uh, or soul tribes in my family um, that I didn't know and I met. And till this day, we are very great friends. So again, 
it's going to feel very home-like. It's going to feel very like connected, like you are seen, you are heard, you're understood. If you are dealing with someone and there is almost the feeling of uncertainty or a feeling of kind of, I feel like this is more to do with your shadow side for some of you, where you're questioning that it seems it's too good to be true. It's not that it seems too good to be true. It is true and it is good for you. Um, it could be from past traumas that you often question when things are going good, but it is something that you deserve, Taurus. So try the best you can not to self-sabotage in this situation. Now I'm going to be pulling out three more cards for the old flame. For Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent their old flame. For Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so we have... Let me pull these to the side. So we have the Page of Cups, the Seven of Cups, and the Judgment card. So I feel like the person from your past or your ex-partner uh, may be reaching out, but I feel that the reason for reaching out is not necessarily because there is a desire to want to reconnect or a desire to want to stabilize anything. I feel that it has more to do with the fact that uh, them knowing that you have options or them knowing that you're moving on is not sitting quite well with them. Um, but I feel like at this point, there's really nothing that can come from this connection. My advice is just to uh, continue on your journey. Uh, judgment card does indicate, you know, the decision of, you know, making the final decision, basically. Are you going to allow them to reach out every blue moon um, and not be consistent, only to kind of emotionally play mind games with you? Or are you going to say enough is enough and close the door on that cycle that is no longer serving you, Taurus? All right, my lovelace. Now let's go to Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the remainder of the month, the beginning of June. In regards to love and romance, give me three cards to represent their new love and three cards to represent their old flame. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, in regards to your new love, we have the Ten of Swords, the Three of Swords, and the Judgment. Whoa, what the hell happened here, Gemini? regards to old love, we have the Four of Wands, the High Priestess, and the Nine of Cups. Wow. These are the exact same cards that I just pulled out for Taurus. So for some of you Geminis, you may be dealing with a Taurus X or a person from the past that has Taurus placement. Okay, so with the new person or the new connection that you were dealing with, Ten of Swords and Three of Swords, Judgment, there was a decision that was made, made based on some type of hurt or betrayal, a feeling of letting down, uh, being let down, or a feeling of uh, betrayal in itself. Um, walk away from this situation. Gemini, I feel like it's not going to progress. It's not good. and It's not going to go anywhere. The judgment card almost feels like a lot of people had a lot to do with this uh, connection or even the betrayal in itself. Um, this is something that for some of you, um, it could have been that you jumped from one relationship when you start ended a relationship when you jumped into another relationship and you're still holding on to those past experiences. You're still holding on to that trauma. So you come off as being extremely judgmental, Gemini, but it's only because you're coming from a place of hurt and you're coming from a place of fear versus fully embracing this new beginning. Now, this can connect um, and resonate with you guys in very different ways, but I feel very strongly like it's not the new person that you're dealing with in itself. I feel like it is affecting that connection because of your past traumas. Now, for others of you, it could be that you have such, like you're so guarded and you make it really difficult for people to get closer to you that you often ask yourself or question why is it so difficult for you to connect with people or why, you know, as an example, why have I been single for this long? Well, if you really take a step back and understand 
how you're put, portraying yourself to the world, you will quickly find that you're the one that keeps yourself extremely guarded. So it's kind of the situation of an example when clients tell me, I'm open to love and I'm ready to start dating, um, but they're not willing to step out of their comfort zone. They're not willing to go out there. They expect the person to simply just show up to their front door. It doesn't work that way. So my advice is if you feel like you're still dealing with certain traumas or certain pain and 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 hurt that you haven't fully, you know, healed from, try the best you can to do shadow work or try the best you can to do some healing techniques so that it can help you um, not only release that energy, but also release the, the energy of the person from the past, your ex-partner. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that it's extremely difficult because you often think of the person from the past um, and it's not necessarily that you're still hung up on them or that love is still there. It's more to do with energetic exchange and you're still holding on to that energy. Now, for those of you guys that are dealing with the person from the past, you have the Four of Wands, the High Priestess, and the Nine of Cups. There is still a desire to want to come back from what it was at some point. There is opportunity to rekindle here, but they are showing almost like... Um, the uh, coming to fully, you know, aware and self-acknowledgement of the growth or the needed growth that was much needed in this relationship or in this connection. So for some of you guys, you may be going through a transition where you're still dealing with the person from your past. You're unsure if things can progress and get better. Um, but if they are really putting the effort and showing you through actions, um, there is definitely a possibility for reconciliation here. And I feel like for some of you guys that are dealing with that type of scenario, you already feel um, like either they're supposed to come back into your life or you're supposed to go back into their lives. And this is only for those of you guys that are already dealing with the person from your past. So those of you guys that are not, don't get any ideas and don't go reaching out like this is, you know, it's meant to be, uh, like I said, understand and know that if they are willing to put in the effort and the energy um, and it is being reciprocated by you, then definitely the the opportunity or possibility to reconcile is definitely there. Um, but like I said, do work on letting go and releasing the, you know, experiences or the toxicity, uh, the taintedness of past relationships and past traumas because it is something that is very highlighted here. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love for Cancer. Three cards for Old Flame. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Here we go. All right, Cancer, your first card is the Seven of Pentacles, the Chariot, and the King of Cups. Beautiful energy here in regards to your past. Four of Pentacles, the Strength card, and the Page of Swords. Okay, so Cancer... There is a situation where you probably felt like things weren't progressing as quickly, like it was a stop and start type of thing. Um, for some of you guys, there's been a lot of distractions going on regarding this connection, but I feel that the momentum starts to pick up in the month of June for you guys. And it almost seems like everything is going to synchronize and the universe is coming together to allow you to strengthen the bond and the connection in this uh, relationship or in this new connection. Um, chariot is definitely moving forward. Know and understand that the chariot is guiding the horses through their will. So there is no real actual chains that are connected to the horses and to the charioteur, um, but he, through his willpower, is guiding them and pushing them forward. So what this means to me is because it's right at the center, what it's telling you is, yes, you deserve to be happy, Cancer. Yes, you deserve to be in a loving relationship. But stop the 
creating scenarios or things that are not even there or you're not even dealing with, um, you got to let go of those insecurities and understand that the relationship or connections will move forward based on the energy that you put forth. So again, um, not to say that you should be worried about this connection, because like I said, I do see that uh, in the month of June, it starts to pick up and it starts to become something more solid. Um, but I do would highly encourage you guys to work on uh, your self-limiting beliefs, um, because that's the reason why in previous connections or relationships is a start and stop type of scenario or things just don't progress. It just seems like it never takes off. So highly encourage you guys to be aware of that. Now, for those of you guys that are single, they are uh, they are speaking about someone from the past coming back. But again, I feel like you weren't necessarily in a relationship with this person. It was a connection that didn't really go anywhere. I feel like you guys are giving each, or the universe is giving you guys another opportunity to be able to connect on a much deeper level and see what comes from that connection. I see them more emotionally available and open to you. Um, so definitely uh, be aware of that. Now, for those of you guys dealing with old love, Four of Pentacles, the Strength card, and Page of Swords. If you're trying, Cancer, if you're trying to convince your ex-partner to go back with you or if you're hoping that... Um, by casually being with them or by sexually being with them, they're going to change their mind about not wanting to go back to the relationship. I don't see that happening. If you are in that situation where you don't know where, what you guys are because you guys haven't technically made up, but you guys are casually seeing each other or being sexually active, know and understand that they're telling you right then and there that they're not wanting to revisit the relationship. So you're not going to really get anything from it because I only see the only thing that they're willing to give is their physical body. So in essence, it, it's keeping you from progress because you're holding on to something that they are only viewing it as sexual satisfaction. So um, don't waste your time and keep it pushing, Cancer. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to new love, give me three cards for new love for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. And three cards for their old flame. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Leos. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising. Okay, here we go. All right, Leo, you have the Hanged Man the five of pentacles and the queen of pentacles in regards to old love we have page of pentacles the lover's card and the seven of wands so you guys are going through a transition right now there is a very um major changes that are surrounding you that are happening that are unfolding whether you're aware of it or not it's almost like the universe is collectively uh, pushing you and propelling you forward. Now, there could have been a situation where you felt like someone was trying to get your attention, but you weren't necessarily that interested or that emotionally invested in the connection. I do see it, however, starting to pick up. Um, like I said, going into June, maybe the middle of June, there is an offering that comes in. And I feel like it comes as a surprise to you because, like I said, I feel in the very beginning of this new connection, you didn't really feel the connection or you weren't that enthusiastic about it. It's almost like, you know, when you have options, but none of the options are great. So you're kind of entertaining multiple people. Um, and out of the bunch, there's like one that is very solid. There's one that you can definitely like the moment you call them and hey, let's hang out. They are definitely down with it. Because um, I definitely do see that they're enthusiastic about you, but I feel like you were kind of reserved. But I feel like that starts to change as we progress into June. So there is an offering that comes through, a desire to want to either hang out or uh, some type of invitation here. And I feel that the invitation is in hopes to be able to solidify this connection. So um, definitely be prepared for that. Now, for those of you guys that are single, single, <laughs> Um, what they're telling you here is uh, put yourself out there. Stop being stuck in the mud, Leo. Uh, stop expecting, like, you know, I said with Taurus, I believe, or Gemini, stop expecting them to show up to your door and knock on your door. You have to go out there and see the world and experience. 
um, a lot of the times when we are bored and, you know, don't really want to get out of our space, it's very easy for people to go on social media or, you know, dating apps or whatnot because it makes it more convenient. However, I feel that there is lack of excitement because there is lack of human connection on your part. So again, I would highly encourage you guys not to go on, you know, dating apps <laughs> this month or the month of June. Be more proactive in physically going out there and actually meeting people and mingling with people. Leos, I don't need to tell you this because you guys are naturally amazing when it comes to socializing, but for some reason you guys are or have been a bit reserved. So I would highly encourage you guys to do that for the month of June. Now, for those of you guys dealing with people from the past or your ex-lover, Page of Pentacles with the Lovers card is still having some type of hope, holding on to some type of hope, but I feel like there is no action on their part. Yes, you're still on their mind. Yes, they still once in a while think of you and have the desire to reach out, see how you're doing. But with the seven of wands here, they're backing up, they're they're pulling away, they're not really taking any type of action. So do not expect any type of changes in the next coming weeks. All right, now let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of, or the month remaining of May, beginning of June. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent their new love and three cards to represent Old Flame, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. First card here is the Page of Pentacles, the Lover's card. What the heck? And the Seven of Wands. Okay. The exact same card that I just pulled out for Leo in regards to the ex-partner. So for some of you Virgos, you may be dealing with the Leo. In regards to uh, the Old Flame for you Virgos, we have the Death card, the Nine of Wands, and the Hanged Man. Okay. All right, so Virgos, for those of you guys that are dealing with a new person, Page of Pentacles, again, I feel like there is a bit of, of slow energy in regards to this connection. However, with the Lover's card, it's really being highlighted here. I feel like if you were dealing with someone new and initially you were excited about it, but it just doesn't seem to progress very quickly and it's kind of like at a standstill, I feel you're going to be getting a new opportunity coming in for you in the month of June um, because uh, the lover's card also represents be that crossroads, but it also indicates options. So I'm seeing like you were somewhat interested in this new connection, but it just didn't move forward or it's at a standstill. I see excitement starting to grow um, the begin going into the month of June. But I feel like it's a new person that's coming in or that is wanting to get your attention. And you may be a little bit um, a little bit uninterested only because you're still waiting to see something with this new person that you were dealing with. However, what Spirit is telling you is to not guard yourself. Open yourself up to opportunities and put yourself out there. Enjoy all the opportunities that come your way. That's the only way you'll figure out who is of your best interest. This is a conversation that I had and I actually made um, a video on my Instagram and on my Snapchat uh, specifically regarding dating, right? Uh, why? Because this is something that I'm often seeing lately with clients. It's like you guys get in situationships um, and the reason for it is because there's lack of clarity in regards to where we're going and what do we have and are we official or not? And the reason for this is because people have somewhat forgotten what dating is dating doesn't mean that you're only dealing with one person and that you're giving all your attention and, and energy to that one person that's not that's not what dating and being single is when you are officially being with someone in a committed relationship then that's when they become the only person you deal with right but in the dating stage when you're getting to know people get to know as many people as possible because that's the only way you're going to be able to figure out who is best suited for you in order for you to date them and do not casually be dating these people and treating them like a boyfriend or girlfriend because if you're already treating them this way why would they want to give you any type of commitment i hope that makes sense so again um 
entertain all the possibilities and options that you have. And from that, you'll be able to make a wise decision about the person that you decide to settle with, Virgo. Now, in regards to your past lovers, we have the death card, nine of wands, and the hanged man. This is an ending cycle. It is time to flip the page. It is time to hit that switch, turn it off, walk away from this. Nine of wands is like after difficulty, after trial and tribulations, after putting as much effort as you possibly could, the death card is here. And the death card always represents transformation. It is a cycle that has come to an end and we cannot evade it anymore. We cannot fight it. We cannot hold on to it for dear life because universe will definitely force us to let go. With the hanged man, you have to be able to see life from a very different perspective than what you have up until now. So again, if there was a hope or desire to rekindle in this connection, know and understand that at this point in time, they are encouraging you to let go. Why? Because you want to give way to new opportunities. You want to make space and room for that one person that is right for you, Virgo. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, we're starting off here with the Two of Pentacles, the Death card, and the Seven of Wands for new love. In regards to the past connection, the Lover's card, the Nine of Wands, and the Hanged Man. I see a few cards that I pulled out for Virgo, so for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Virgo. Um, in regards to this new connection, there was, there was an imbalance or... I should say, um, what's the energy that's coming through? Clarify that for me, please. There was a lack of exchange of power in this connection. So for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with a person that was, as an example, um, had control issues, or you yourself could have control issues, Libra, or you weren't that sensitive and they weren't that sensitive. There was... I feel like you guys kind of mirrored each other's energy and that's what made it very difficult because um, it was in somewhat shape or a way or form like dating yourself. Um, Two of Pentacles does indicate an imbalance. It indicates having the need to balance things out and there was a refusal of that with the death card. So you guys could currently be in separation, currently could have stopped communication or could have po possibly been blocked, either you or they blocked you. Um, I don't see this moving forward with the death card. It's time to start new. It's start to give yourself the opportunity of connecting and making room to, for new people. Um, I don't see it progressing into anything. Now, for those of you guys that are dealing specifically with a Scorpio um, and you feel like there could be some type of possibility here, the only possibility that can come from this connection is if you are willing to bring your guard down completely. Because I don't see them doing that and it could potentially be because of their past traumas and, and you know, uh, previous relationships. I see them extremely guarded, but I also see them extremely strong in regards to knowing what they want. And if you're not the one that's going to put your guard down, they are not willing to do that. So, um, again, just, just be mindful of that. Now, for those of you guys dealing with people from the past, uh, the Lover's Cart, Nine of Wands, and the Hanged Man, there is still love here. There is still a connection. However, um, with the Nine of Wands and the Hanged Man, it's time to see things from a very different perspective. It's time to take a step back and realize, are they holding you back, Libra? Are you holding on to the idea or the hopefulness that there will be some type of reconciliation? And if so, if this is, uh, has this kept you from being able to move forward? Has this kept you guarded and not allowed anyone uh, to get close to you because you're still hopeful to this situation. Mm -hmm. What Spirit is telling you is don't stop your life. Don't stop and place yourself, you know, um, 
place yourself outside the court uh, because you're waiting for someone. The thing is, and something that I tell often to my clients is, when it comes to relationships, yes, we go through challenging moments where sometimes separation or temporary separation is needed. However, if after a while they haven't returned and they are not eager to want to make things right, you're just wasting your time if you're sitting there waiting on them. Time and life passes by and it is unforgiving and it will not forgive you because you were hopeful. So what I'm saying is, as you're waiting for someone to make up their mind about you, they themselves are living their life. And then it comes to understanding that they moved on and then you're hurt and with more anger towards them because you waited long enough. So what I'm telling you is do not sit there and wait for someone to choose you, Libra. If they're not choosing you, do not choose them and walk away. Open yourself up to better opportunities. All right, now let's go to Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Give me one second. Let me have a drink. All right. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, definitely like, comment below, let me know. By the way, for those of you guys that are new to my Patreon, I thank you guys and I will be reaching out to you as I do provide free readings for those of you guys that donate to our channel. <clears throat> oh, All right, let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's get to the needy greedy, Scorpio. <laughs> let's see what's going on. All right, here we go. Scorpio, new love. We have the Four of Swords, the Two of Pentacles, and the Strength card. Okay, off the bat, you're dealing with a person that is extremely stubborn. This is a person that if they feel they're off balance or they feel like you're a little bit too much, uh, they will start to pull back, and I feel like that's exactly what's happened. Um, my advice is don't waste your time. Uh, don't waste your time because I feel like this person is very stuck in their ways. This is a person that perhaps has gone through a lot and they figured themselves out and they know what they want and they're not going to change their ideals or they're not going to change their way of seeing things. Um, and I feel like because of, you don't want to hold on to something because of pride. You don't want to... It's kind of like the situation where you feel a bit rejected and the moment you feel rejected or the moment you feel like they're playing hard to get, the more you want to chase them. You don't want to do that because then you fall into a cycle of toxicity, Scorpio. Um, I would highly encourage you guys to give yourself some time, especially from now all the way to June or the beginning of June. Focus primarily on yourselves and nurturing and giving time to yourselves and figuring yourself out. Um, and the reason I say that is because I feel like the more empowered you are, Scorpio, the easier it is for you to attract. Um, you guys are a sign that is extremely easy to attract uh, opposite or same-sex individuals that are interested in you. Uh, it is your natural instinct. It is your natural high sexual energy that you're able to pull. Um, that's never been a problem, right, Scorpio? <laughs> but you do want to be able to attract the right person. So again... Uh, give yourself some space. Uh, do not text them. Do not communicate with them. Um, if it falters, let it fall uh, and embrace a new beginning. Okay. Now, when we're talking about past relationships or past connection, we have here the sun, the judgment and the page of swords. So they are definitely not over you. There's still a desire and want to connect. They may already be connecting with you or may be reaching out to you. However, with the Judgment card and the Page of Swords, I reason, the reason why I feel like they reached out and if they haven't, they will be reaching out to you, Scorpio, is because of what they're seeing on social media. Whether it's them seeing you live your best life or whether they see you dating or whether they see you out there, I feel like they are kind of, their insecurities are kind of being triggered. So they want to see if they can come back into your life. So I don't feel that it's coming from a more authentic place. I feel that the reason for it is kind of like Scorpio belong to me. Now they don't belong to me. Let me see if I can get them again. Uh, so don't fall for that. My advice here with the judgment card, the sun, 
pick yourself, choose yourself, and move on. You know, page of sorts, cut down the BS and don't entertain anything that obviously didn't move forward in a positive way. So there's no way to, there's no point in revisiting a situation that is not working for you. All right. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with my Sagis here. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love. Three cards for old love for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, we have a card popping out. First card is the High Priestess here. All right, new love. Let's see. Give me three cards, new love. Three cards, old flame. Okay. So we have the High Priestess, the King of Cups, and the Death card. Wow, major transformation happening for you guys. Now in regards to Old Love, we have the Ten of Wands, the Four of Pentacles, and the Judgment card. You have to make a decision, uh, Sagittarius. You have to make a decision. We'll jump into that right now. But in regards to New Love, you have the High Priestess, the King of Cups, and the Death card. I feel like for a lot of you guys, there is... You may not be dealing with someone. I feel like you're ready to start dating or you're ready to be open to the possibilities. But there is something that there's like this little voice, this little intuition that you've been feeling or you've been sensing like there's a change in the air. Something's about to happen, but you can't quite put your finger on it. And the reason for this is because you are intuitively picking up on the fact that new love is coming their way to you now. King of Cups may be water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Could be their moon or Venus. However, with the death card, you got to let go of the past. You got to let go of what is no longer working for you. If you've broken up with a partner, but you're still casually seeing them, you got to stop exchanging your energy with them because this is what is affecting you in order to be able to move forward. This is what's holding you back, Sagittarius. So again, I would highly encourage you guys to shut the door on the past and open it wide open or push it wide open to the new possibilities. The death card is major transformation here with the high priestess is the all knowing and being able to see or sense what is unfolding and what is unfolding for you, the king of cups. This is an emotional available person that is coming in that is willing to transform or that is more than capable of transforming your life. Um, but you have to be ready for it. And in order to be ready for it, you cannot be a tide or you cannot be bound to anything from the past because it will potentially affect you in a negative way. So my advice would be to fully embrace this new beginning. It is exciting because whether you are experiencing it now, whether you will experience it in the middle of June, things are going to almost seem like they're moving very quickly and in a very fast pace, but I feel like it's been necessary at this point because it's been kind of slow for you for quite a while. So um, definitely pay attention to the universe. They're talking to you through signs. Now, when we're talking about ex-partners and uh, dealing with a person from your past, Ten of Wands is getting at the road's end, right? It is getting to a point of no longer dealing with with overburdenness or energy of um, literally physically carrying the relationship. Four of Pentacles, it's time to protect yourself and it's time to make a decision. What is your decision going to be? Is it going to be to the best of your interest or are you going to continuously keep self-sacrificing yourself, making yourself unhappy, then looking at your partner and wondering, why am I so unhappy? Because you're sacrificing for the sake of them. So, and the reason I say this is the Ten of Wands with the Four of Pentacles indicates to me a recurring cycle. So it could be that you keep going back to your ex-partner. It could be that you keep uh, breaking up, going back with each other. It's like a never-ending cycle. But with the Ten of Wands here, it's come to that culmination. So there is a major decision that needs to be made. My advice in regards to this person from your past with the judgment, make the decision of choosing yourself, Sagittarius. At this point, you cannot continue sacrificing yourself or your happiness. You cannot continue being on the path that you've been because it is a path of feeling unfulfilled or feeling like you're not complete. And the reason for it is because you keep giving and giving and giving away, um, leaving yourself completely empty. So be mindful of that my advice don't waste your time anymore with that person from the past 
All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys enjoyed these videos, definitely comment below. Let me know. And don't forget to like the video so you guys can help the algorithm. All right. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cappies. All right. Here we go. Capricorn. First card here is the Five of Wands, the King of Wands, and the King of Pentacles. Wow. All righty, Capricorns. I see you guys. I see people trying to fight for your attention. If you're not already experiencing this, you're definitely going to be experiencing this in June. I see two particular options here. Uh, one could be a fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. The other could be Earth uh, or a fellow Earth uh energy like yourself, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. Um, what's really standing out here is that I feel like with the with the wands energy, the king of wands, I feel that this is a person that you can be extremely physically attracted to, but I feel like their attention spam or attention to detail is not as strong as this earth element or this earth partner that's coming in. Because if you can see, the king of wands is looking towards the wand, right? And if you look at the king of pentacles, he's not looking at the pentacle he's holding, but rather he's looking down to the ground. And this is indicating to me almost like watching the steps he's taking, which would lead me to feel like this person is more attention to detail. This is the type of partner that perhaps some of you Capricorns have been hoping for. A partner that is going to be very thoughtful, a partner that is going to pay very close attention to detail, which is something that uh, Capricorns definitely love, right? Um, you guys are not much of a word type of person that expresses through words, but more through actions. So a person that is uh, that aware is definitely a partner that is better suited for you. But with the five of wands, I definitely do see that there is a lot of passion I am not going to lie, for a lot of you Capricorns, I feel that the month of June is going to be extremely busy when it comes to love and romance. Five of Wands is fighting for, right? It, it is going to battle. It is people trying to fight for your attention. And you have literally two kings here. Now, it doesn't have to be kings. It could be female energy. Um, we just read energies here. But they are definitely, there is two amongst the five for some of you that will definitely stick out for you guys. So there is potential uh, to reconnect. For some, could be reconnection. For others, it's definitely, you know, uh, having the time of your life <laughs> dealing with multiple people. And like I just did the spiel um, with, uh, I believe it was Leo or Virgo, uh, in regards to dating. You know, when you're single and you're dating, you have the possibility to date as many people as you want, right? And the one that wants you is definitely going to step up and ask you officially. So my advice, Capricorn, is definitely take advantage of this because I feel like your love life is definitely going to take a big shake up <laughs> the month of June. So touche to you guys. <laughs> to me too, right? <laughs> All right. Now let's look into old love. You have the justice card here, maybe dealing with a Libra, five of cups here, and the ten of pentacles. So there may be a person missing you right now. For some of you guys, you could have dealt with a Libra in the past. Um, I feel like they're, they are dealing with their karma. They are dealing with, I feel like for a lot of, uh, a lot of you that are dealing with someone from the past or that are wanting to know about the person from the past, if they did you dirty Capricorn, they are definitely experiencing the, the backlash to that um, and I feel it very strongly why because we have the justice card next to the five of cups the five of cups to me signifies remorse um, with the justice card it's like the balance is or the scales are finally being balanced and when we balance the scales it is weighing the good versus the bad um, how much good have you done how much bad have you done and whatever outweighs it, which with the Five of Cups would indicate um, major remorse in regards to how they treated you or the treatment that they gave to you or the fact that they could have taken you for granted 
Whereas now they've been dealt with um, having to deal with the consequences of that. For some of them, it could be that they are seeing you. Um, with the Ten of Pentacles, it's like, I am in pain and I am in hurt and I'm realizing that, you know, I lost Capricorn and I didn't appreciate them. And now I see them living their best life or now I see them moving on when I never thought that they would type of thing. So again, there's a lot of remorse here. Um, I don't feel like they would be reaching out. However, for some of you, it could potentially get to that point. But I feel like if they do reach out, don't be surprised if it's because they're drunk um, or because they are under the influence um, and they're just they can't control uh, their emotions. And that's the reason why they actually take action. But for the majority of you, I don't see any contact. I just feel like they're watching you from afar. And there is a major feeling of disappointment because they have finally realized or came to the conclusion that you were good for them and that they lost you, that they had you and they let you slip away. So there you go. You know, a lot of people forget that Capricorn is the sign of karma, right? Of um, Father Kronos. And what that means is that oftentimes, uh, if you have a Capricorn or you know a Capricorn or you yourself are a Capricorn, you'll often notice that people that have done you wrong, um, as time progresses, like you will be put in a position where you see them deal with the consequences of how they did you. Um, and it could be a, in a year from now, it could be in two years from now, doesn't matter. You will find out in some shape, way or form that they are themselves paying for what they did to you or that they are experiencing exactly what they put you through. And the reason for that is not a coincidence. It's because uh, Capricorn is one of the signs that doesn't need to go out of their way to create uh, or to, to, to crave payback. Why? Because you are naturally born with the protection um, of Saturn. And Saturn is like, you know, the Saturn being your father figure, as an example, uh, planetary wise, um, being your father figure is going to uh, Saturn itself is harsh on us Capricorns. Right. But those that come wrong or that do us wrong, like Saturn will take care of that. <laughs> and Saturn knows no bounds when it comes to time. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's go moving on here with uh, Aquarius now, another fellow Saturnian. All right, let's see what's going on with my lovely Aquarians. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent their new love. Three cards to represent their old flame. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Aquarius, we have here the Four of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Eight of Swords. Now, in regards to past relationships, give me one second. Okay, my lovely, sorry for the interruption. I was getting knocked at the door, so I had to open that real quick. All right, back to Aquarius. In regards to new love, we have the Four of Cups, Seven of Pentacles, and the Eight of Swords. In regards to the old love, we have the Wheel, the Sun, and the Six of Pentacles. Okay. So in regards to the new person you may be dealing with, there is a feeling of frustration. I see a bit of um, being very much in your head. Uh, you guys could have possibly taken some space or... Uh, giving each other some room may not be communication at the moment. However, with the four of cups and seven of pentacles, I feel like for a lot of you guys, you are experiencing a bit of dealing with past trauma for some, and this could uh, potentially be influencing your new connections. Now, seven of pentacles is always about being able to see um, the fruits of your labor being able to see the manifestation of the hard work that you've been putting. But looking towards, or I should say, the Seven of Pentacles is looking towards the Four of Cups. So there is a feeling here of having not really taken advantage of a situation or opportunity that showed up. Um, for a lot of you guys, it could be that you're very much in your head. Again, like I said, 
experiencing a bit of nostalgic type of energy for some um, could have to do with past relationships or previous experiences. And the Eight of Swords is an indication of being very much in your head, like I mentioned. So if you guys are dealing with someone right now, I feel like the communication or the connection is not where it should be right now. But I feel like a lot of it has to do with the emotions that are coming up that you may currently be experiencing. If you're feeling a bit foggy minded or a bit confused about your emotions, um, just remember Aquarius, you guys are going through a major transition. We have Pluto stationed in your sign and Pluto is the um, the planet of, you know, of death, of rebirth, of um, transformation and transmutation. So for a lot of you guys, it could be that the feelings or suppressed feelings, I should say, about past relationships may be coming to surface. And that's something that you're currently facing and having to deal with only in the positive way, because all of those suppressed emotions or everything that you've kept under surface um, has to have some type of release. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, you guys are going through or will be going through this type of energy. So the best advice I can give you guys in that situation is acknowledge those feelings. Don't suppress them. Don't run away from them. If it is a person or someone from your past that is resurfacing in regards to the, the feelings that you have for them, even if we're talking about like resentments, holding on to resentments is something that a lot of you may be dealing with. So again, acknowledge those feelings. Don't try to push them back down. Acknowledge them. Um, take a moment to internalize and then move on from that energy. Don't hold on or don't stay put in that energy because you will be feeling a bit of your energy being a little bit off. And I feel like a lot of it has to do because you guys are experiencing a lot of commotion in regards to your emotions and in regards to your state of mind. So again, my advice is acknowledge, don't suppress, but then release it. Move on from that type of energy so that it doesn't affect your current connections or the connections that are coming in for you. Now, in regards to past relationships, we have the wheel here with the sun and the six of pentacles. For some of you guys, it is revisiting the past. Um, again, I feel... I feel like not so much in regards to relationships or the person itself. I feel like it's an energy of having to deal with what we've experienced in the past and where we're at at this point in our lives to have more of a clarity to find more of the path that we should be walking towards. And with the wheel and the sun, I feel like for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that had a connection. reason it felt like it went sideways or it didn't take off or it didn't become anything and you guys kind of fell off I feel like you're being given the opportunity to rekindle this connection so do not be surprised if people from the past uh, start to come in and try to reconnect with you um, specifically more to do with a situation where you felt like things didn't progress and you kind of don't know why um, I feel like you guys are being given an opportunity to rekindle and not only that, but I feel the opportunity to, it's almost like both of you guys had to go your own separate ways in order to find each other again in a more evolved, um, in a more evolved energy. So there was certain lessons that you had to go through as well as certain lessons that they had to go through in order to be able to find each other in, uh, in, in perfect balance. So again, do not be surprised if a person from the past does reach out or does communicate with you. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Give me three cards for new love for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and three cards for the old flame of Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to new love and the old flame, give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. All right, here we go, Pisces. All right, your first card here is the eight of cups, the two of swords, and the four of pentacles. You're walking away from a situation, Pisces, where you could have felt like you weren't really aware of what the person or the partner, or the partner that you were dealing with what it was that they really wanted in this connection. For some of you guys, I feel like there was almost difficulty in connecting or getting on the same page. 
Um, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that I feel like they're going through a transition of letting go or having been forced to let go of the past. And it's something that they're still not ready. I see them emotionally unavailable and I see you emotionally unavailable as well, Pisces. There is a feeling of if you continue this new connection or holding on to this new connection, you're going to get to a point of feeling like you're not really being reciprocated or they're not really putting the effort. So the advice here is to let go. This is not in your highest, highest good at this point. Uh, Eight of Cups does speak about walking away with the Two of Swords walking away because you're trying to find, um, you're trying to internalize or you're trying to find clarity in regards to the situation where they're not going to give you any type of clarity because, like I said, I feel like they're shut off or they've shut you off. So again, I don't see any progress in regards to this connection. If you're still dealing with them and there is still a feeling of unclarity, a bit of confusion, don't sit there and wait for them to clarify that for you because I don't see that happening. My advice is just keep it pushing to the next person. Open yourself up and give yourself the opportunities. Now, when we're talking about the person from the past, we have the Tower, the High Priestess, and the World card. There are revelations that you're going to be going through, Pisces, in the next coming weeks. Uh, the Tower is definitely being experienced a, a bit of a shakeup. Um, it's almost going to feel like like the rug is being pulled from under you. With the High Priestess, it's being able to really tap into your intuition. My advice in this situation is definitely don't rush into anything. What if you are still dealing with an ex-partner, a person from your past? The Tower with the High Priestess is almost like you're being shaken or you're being pushed to shake things up in your life so that you your awareness can become more broader so that you can it's almost like the universe is kind of holding you accountable to certain things certain habits certain cycles um so for some of you guys it could be getting you know information about the ex maybe you didn't really know what was going on in their personal life and all of a sudden you find out they got married or all of a sudden you find out that they are you know moving on or that they've been moving on all the while they were trying to contact you and you're kind of confused about it but with the high priestess you're finally being able to see things clearly it's like the tower is you know it's like a building falling and what remains is the dust and the smoke and everything but when all clears right you're able to see more clearly and with the high priestess you're being guided through your intuition so again there is a major transformation that's happening here, but with the world card, it's time to elevate yourself or it's time to move on to the next cycle of your life. Whether you're ready or not, you're going to be pushed to do so. So again, for a lot of you guys, if you are still dealing with an ex-partner or a person from the past, there's going to be certain revelations that come up. Um, and I feel like it's a way of the universe telling you it's time to keep it pushing, Pisces. You cannot keep or you should not continue holding on to something that is not helping you, something that is not uh, bringing to you what it is that you want when we're talking about relationships and partnerships. So it's almost like the illusion is falling and you're literally uh, being guided, you know, by your spirit guides to be forced to see the reality of things so that you can then step into the new phase of your life, the new cycle in your life where you're walking towards something much more stable, something much more meaningful at this point and again with the tower it's always unexpected so just be prepared um for some of you guys you've already experienced the person from the past but like i said with the world card here it's time to elevate yourself it's time to move on and embrace this new cycle this new beginning um, this new version of yourself, if you will. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to <clears throat> Aries. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, give me three cards for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for new love and three cards regarding their old flame. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, we got cards flying out. Okay, give me one second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
All right, the first card that we have here is the Four of Wands, the Judgment card, and the Chariot. Wow, beautiful energy here, Aries. So for a lot of you guys, you've made the decision. You may have been dealing or dating someone for a while, and it's finally uh, becoming very solid, very stable. Four of Wands with the Judgment card, they made the decision. They see you as the person that they want to commit to. They see you as the person that is worth putting effort and energy because they do see a future with you. The judgment is making that decision and moving forward with it. So the chariot card is here. Uh, taking action. I definitely see this progress. Uh, major potential for a lot of you guys. It could be that if you've been thinking or talking about moving in with each other or making a life together, I actually see it happening or unfolding between the months of June and July. Uh, there is a decision that is being made, an agreement, uh, for some of you guys, it could be a, a contract, uh, which could be some type of engagement or marriage. Um, very, very positive and strong energy here. Uh, now, for those of you guys that are just recently dating, or I should say recently single, Four of Wands with the Judgment does indicate finally getting to a point of understanding exactly what it is that you're looking for in a partner and not hesitating or not settling for anything less. The more you go into or step into this type of energy, the more powerful you're going to become, Aries, because there is certainty with it, right? When you are confident and when you are not hesitant about what it is that you want, the universe will definitely deliver that to you. For some of you guys, it could be a person that's coming into your life that is going to be introduced or brought to you either through friends, through colleagues, through people in your social circle. And it is a person that is going to completely captivate you. The chariot with the judgment is very powerful energy and it does indicate that they are very well liked or very well respected amongst their peers or amongst those around them. So this is a person that is mature and it is a person that is very uh, certain about the things that they want and what they're looking for in a partner. So beautiful energy here. Now in regards to the person from the past, we have here the Three of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, and Three of Cups. So I do see um, being more on the same page, uh, especially those of you guys that have children. I feel like the month of June is going to be very positive in the aspect of almost being on the same page in regards to dealing with children here. Now, for those of you guys that don't have children, this could indicate a bit of, you know, you've been working or maybe still in contact or still in communication with the person from the past. However, nothing has really solidified, but I feel that moving forward, there is going to be much more, uh, being more proactive in regards to the communication. If you are wanting or desiring to have some type of rekindling or reconciliation, I don't see it happening anytime soon. However, I do see that the communication will be much more constant, um, more they will continuously keep communicating with you. If they haven't, they will in the next coming weeks. But again, I don't see it actually stabilizing into anything uh, serious or anything that you would be able to, like for me to say there is definite uh, reconciliation. I don't see that. I do see that the communication will be more constant, however. All right, my lovelies. Okay. Well, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. Like, share, and comment, and I will see you guys next time. Until then, we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye.